David, you will not believe how much it tastes like Hot Pot. This one bite. Dumpling Lab has a winner. Nam Hai, Ba Hai, Roy. Okay. To this day, every time I hear him speak Viet, it's pretty interesting. When it comes to Asian restaurants, you do not want to miss these. From authentic Vietnamese bun dao, to po boy bun mi's, to Phuket Thai food, an innovative dumpling lab, and even South Asian boba. I mean, that's why they call this place New York, because everybody's doing something new. So please hit that like button, and we might even release our very own Fung Bros dish at one of these spots. Stay tuned, let's go. All right, so our first new Asian spot that you gotta check out if you're visiting New York City is Five Spice. It is a Vietnamese fusion spot on one of the coolest streets in New York City, by the way. Ame Leon Dory is right there. The Kiss store is not too far away. This is Mulberry Street. And we might even get our own unique menu items that are limited, so let's check it out. All right, everybody, the food has arrived here at Five Spice. And what I love about the fusion here is that you can get French fries that kind of taste like McDonald's fries. First of all, you know, McDonald's have the best fries. And then you can get like scorched Brussels sprouts. You can get a chicken vermicelli. And they actually have very, very delicious pho. I mean, look at all the onions in the jalapenos in this, man. You can get incredibly good bun mi's. I've got a fried fish bun mi. I've got a regular one. Hey, what are you going for first? For me, I'm going with this fried fish bun meat. That I is your love this fish. Bro. Oh my goodness, with a little bit of the uh, aioli in there with some spicy sauce. This is incredible, guys. This is the best bun meat. I've ever had in my life. And I actually think it's really, really important to have good Asian representation on a street that has Kith, Ame, Supreme. You know, like all these things, there needs to be Asian rep amongst that because there's so many Asian people that go to those stores. Yo, I love their take on mixing old and new. Here you have your traditional pho broth. Here you got this very dense kind of scallion um, sweet soy sauce that I'm actually gonna pour into it to make it like a consomme, man. Oh Almost like- Oh my goodness. Oh, go hold dip up, it. hold up. Dip it, man. Ah! Yo, this is my favorite bun meat in the whole oh world. Gosh. I said it once, I'll say it again. Yo, this sauce kicks up the pho. And we were talking to Alex, the owner of Five Spice, and I was like, honestly, I, I like this spot so much. I always come here when I'm on the street, like I would love my own menu item because we like to, you know, do our own little fusions here. Honestly, for me, I'm gonna take some of my favorite uh, appetizer items, like the fried Brussels sprouts, and I'm gonna put them in the bun meat. Ooh. I think that that would be like something that, you know. Oh man, extra. I mean, honestly, you could even dip this in the pho broth right here. I've always been a huge fan of dipping bun meats in the pho broth. All right, so I poured their scallion oil consomme into my pho to kind of beef it up. See how that little concentrate, how it's different than the pho broth. And then I'm gonna dip my classic bun mi into it. All right, so I really like the idea of like a French dip bun mi. So what I did is I asked them for the sauce of the shaking beef, AKA the Boluck Lock, which is very deep and, and thick. And then this is the consomme from their beef brisket. Here I got the fatty consomme from the beef brisket. I'm about to put this on the fried fish bun mi. Ooh. And actually the fried fish, it all really goes together. I really did not think beef and fish would be, you know, two flavors that, that complement each other, but that was super good. All right, in my hand, I got the new Pandan cocktail and the Ube cocktail. What kind of ideas do you guys got? I know for me, I'm looking to get my own bun mi. I always wanted my own bun mi. I love the way you guys do the bread here, the proteins, everything. So definitely my own twist on the bun mi. Yeah, man, I love the fries here and I love the beef brisket and I love that like consomme sauce that comes along with it or that you can get with it. So I want, I want to do something with that. I mean, I think those ideas are really cool. We can definitely do something with that. Let's let's work together. We'll get back to you soon. All right, keep up to date with Five Spices social media and our social media to find out which dishes we got coming out at all their locations. And uh, man, I'm excited. Yo, shout out to Irish Cream, but I'm telling you right now, this Ube cocktail is incredible. You don't need Guinness anymore. You just got Pandan and Ube. New Asian concepts in New York City, guys. We have a Vietnamese spot called Mom, and we're not serving pho or bun mi's, not even just one notch beyond that. I'm talking about two notches beyond that, guys. Gerald speaks Vietnamese, he's a white American, but he's here with his wife that's running this spot, guys, and it is super authentic. Everybody's speaking Vietnamese, and he does too. Let's check it out. This is bundao mom tong. Okay. What are the, all the elements, at least? Oh uh, yeah, bundao mom tong with uh, house-made dao hu. House made zoi, chakom, tin heo, 
Lom nướng, bún, rau thơm. So let me translate. That's tofu. Tofu. Pork okay. Sticky rice sausage. Sticky rice sausage. Yeah. Pork belly. Pork belly. Blood sausage. Blood sausage. sausage. Fried intestines. Fried intestines. Let's get it. And then, As this dish embodies what I love about Vietnamese food. A lot of freshness, fried stuff. Honestly, you know I'm not the biggest fan of intestines, but to show respect and to show that I don't give a F, I'm about to go in on the intestines. I shouldn't have started with the intestines. I got a little of everything. I got the block of noodles right here. I love how it comes together. All right, everybody, I got the pork belly here. It kind of reminds me of a Korean bosom. Oh. That is the best fermented shrimp paste dip I've had. It's super funky and super strong, but it has this little layer of oil that kind of balances it out, man. Yo, and they really created a vibe out here. All right, here I have a very, very, very herbaceous blood sausage. About to just dip it in a little bit. Yo, it's Gerald's wife, and she's from Hanoi. Yeah. Nice, nice. Think out, I'm gonna try the tofu guys, I love it how a lot of the ingredients are shipped in from Vietnam. I'm sure with the current, you know, uh, trade stuff going on, it's a little bit hard, but uh, man, shout out to them guys, shout out to Gerald. What they're pulling off is really cool, and it's so cool. You got people that are happily sitting 30 feet away from the restaurant. Okay, so the restaurant mom is across the street, but they got the extension table near Grand Street Park right here. Wow. Do you guys prefer this or you guys want to be with the crowd? Oh, for yeah, so much better. Yeah. I do not have just any regular cafe sudats. Actually, the coconut coffee, which is a little bit different. And then here I got the Pennyworth drink. You know what it is when you come to a Viet restaurant. But let's try the coconut coffee. Adds an extra layer on top of your regular Viet coffee, man. This is lit. Pennyworth drink is nice and easy to drink. Another nice little sweet green taste to cover the greens here. Mom NYC, man, you can't come here and not feel the vibe. Of course, guys, we're here at Wan Wan. This is the first Phuket based restaurant I've been to. Phuket is a very Chinese influenced part of Southern Thailand. Um, a lot of the names of these dishes, I actually could recognize them in Cantonese. So I don't know if they're getting it from the Cantonese production pronunciation or the Hokkien pronunciation, but this was called Dofu. This was called Gun. This was called, I don't know, Kai Pei, you know, so. Hey man, always dope to see the fusion. Yo guys, it's like a Thai version of agadashi tofu, but of course it's Thailand, so it's got way more sauces. Guys, uh, these are the Thai fried chicken skins. I'll squeeze a little bit of lime on top. This does actually remind me a lot of Japanese izakaya food because they also serve these fried chicken skins at izakayas. That's a banger. I don't know if you guys like fried chicken skins, but these ones at Wan Wan are the best I've ever had. This is the Yum Hoi. This is a scallop salad, guys. My goodness here. I'm just gonna go for the scallop first. Mmm. Mmm. Guys, that is giving me vibes of like a scallop larb salad. All right, here we got the beef noodle soup. This is not Thai boat noodles, and this is not exactly like pho, but it's definitely something in between. It's probably very, very Chinese influenced. Let me try the broth real quick. Mmm. Very sweet, lots of soy, very herbaceous. So it's definitely more like a sweeter, more soy forward pho, essentially. But let me try this out, guys. I love trying other people's beef noodle soups. It's one of my favorite things. For those of you who don't know, Thailand has a very, very deep food culture. And the stuff that you would get at an average Thai restaurant is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, this is like next level stuff because these are actually dishes they eat in Thailand. Maybe this one's a little bit more Chinese influence from the Hokkien side, but either way, guys, this is really unique and really delicious. I give this noodle soup, honestly, like a 4.5 out of 5. All right, guys, so this plate right here is something unique. The components might look a little bit familiar because you have the fried chicken here, you have the Thai sriracha, you know, the less hot, more sweet version, and then you kind of got your Patsy U type noodles right here, and then you got what is probably the fusion and American side of it all, which is the fried kale. That's good. Mm. For those who don't know out there, Patsy U, Pat Ki Mao, it obviously has very strong Chinese roots. And this one is just showing it off right here. When you're talking about Phuket and how it's really like the food is heavily influenced by the Chinese immigrants that went there, guys, I can see it right here. This is lobster tom yum. Only something you would find 
in the East Coast where they have a lot of lobsters because they don't even have lobsters in Thailand. Um, but they got Tom Yum noodles, man. I gotta try this out, man. Let me just go in. Mmm. Man, everything here is so good. Look at these oyster mushrooms. Gigantic. Looking at is the sem cloud. This is a dish I've never had before. The noodles are actually made out of fish, so it's like a fish ball, but in the form of noodles. And then on top, we have a really nice branzino, a little fried shallots, and uh, scallions on top. Let me break this up, man. I'm so excited, man. Sem pla in a veggie broth. This broth, if I had to compare it to something else, I'd have to say it's closer to a one ton broth, but a lot more ginger and a lot more fish. Everybody, when it comes to new Asian concepts in New York City, I mean, you're talking about Phuket, a place that a lot of people know for partying, but they didn't know that the food is so good. You know, or maybe you did know if you went there, but a lot of people haven't been there. So I'm just so glad that Thai food is just going deeper and deeper in New York City. You got Isan Thai, you got Central Thai, you got Chiang Mai, and then now you have Phuket. I love to see it, man. New Asian concepts only in New York City. All right, going head to head with the Karage burger from Tori Bien. We have a Singaporean chicken sandwich coming up. There's also a bar upstairs called Singlish. So this is one whole unit. They're doing some fusion Singaporean foods. Let's check it out. Man, how would you describe the food here at Char? So like the food here, it's all focused on like Southeast Asian dishes. All right, everybody, we got the food right here. This is the Api Api burger. It has a kind of a papaya salad and then sambal on it for the heat. And then obviously you have the wonton mi, and this is also a really, really popular dish, also with a little side of sambal. And of course you got your kaya tart. I'm excited about that because kaya toast is really big out there. So guys, this is some new Singaporean, Indonesian, Southeast Asian flavor. Wow, examining this burger, this does look like chicken thigh. It's got sambal sauce dripping. It is crispy fried, kind of has a thick crust to it. Lots of papaya salad on top to kind of cool it down and bring it all together. This is the api api meaning in Bahasa Indonesian fire fire burger, guys. Dude, you guys, this is unlike anything I've had before. There's salted egg yolk as well. I'm telling you guys, in terms of it being interesting, this is the most interesting chicken sandwich I've ever had. You guys, I've never had French fries like this before. There is a slight uh, Singaporean chili sauce dusted on there, as well as the salted egg yolk mayo aioli. That salted egg yolk aioli is one of the best ones that I've ever had. Sometimes they get it, make it too egg yolky. Sometimes it's not enough. This is right in the sweet spot. All right, you guys, you are looking at a brand new item. This is a kaya tart. They took kaya toast, pandan, and the Portuguese egg tart dan tat from Macau, mix it all together. You cannot find this over in Asia. You cannot find this in New York or the West Coast until now. Oh, oh, oh. I'm telling you guys, crazy rich Asians just set off a chain reaction because now we're eating Kaya Portuguese egg tarts and they're delicious. This is a five out of five. Man, I cannot tell you how much it feels like Singapore here, especially more of like the old colonial towns out there or even in Malaysia as well. Guys, it's got that great vintage vibe. Here I have the wonton mee. I got some shrimp chips. I have this very, very gingery soup. I'm actually gonna pour a little bit on. I know that people eat it separately sometimes, but I'm just, I just need a little bit uh, uh, of moisture in there. Mm. So one ton me, of course, is one ton lo mein, right? In Cantonese. And I'll tell you this, Cantonese diasporic food, sometimes I really like it because it's like Cantonese food, but kicked up some notches. It's just got some extra flavor. It is hard to find this dish in New York City, only a few spots serve it. But I gotta say, this is probably the best version of one ton meat. You guys gotta check it out. Mm. This is globalization right here, and there is no more global of a city than New York City right now. Look at it, I'm meaning sambal fried chicken sandwiches with some wonton meat in a place that feels like Singapore, guys. This quality and these products feel like like they're being ported straight over and that's what I just love to see guys. I'm so excited for the future of Asian food in New York City. Let's keep it moving. All right, everybody, we're here at Cafe Joe. It's a new kind of Korean inspired uh, cafe over in the East Village. We got Chi here who's a, you know, a partner here. Can you tell us about the drinks? 
So you got a strawberry matcha latte. The stracha latte, classic <laughs> now. It's a classic drink. And on this side, you got the masala chai. All right, guys. And then they also have like Korean bowls in the back. We're gonna try some, but let me just try the drink. Can you hold up, please? Chi, thank you. You may know Chi from our Pal Park video in Jersey. <laughs> the star of it. I like that. That's real strawberry and it's not too sweet. So I like your guys' take on the stracha latte. Here's the masala chai. Ooh, kind of spicy, but I like the balance of this one a lot. Okay, so they do have hot food that you can order from the back. Um, this is the kimchi fried rice with a fried egg on top. It looks like an Instagram photo right here. Look at how picturesque they made it. And then here I have this Jolly Pong latte. It's actually off the menu, but it has the Korean Jolly Pong like uh, rice snack on top. That's gonna be snoking in there. It's gonna taste probably like a, a cereal and milk. Ah, nice, light, and toasty. Okay, let's try it. Kimchi fried rice. And for new Asian foods that you have never seen before, here we have the hojicha maple butter souffle pancakes. Now maybe they're not it's gonna be a great brunch food. Watch this, let me drizzle some. Boom. Oh. Whoa. Super fluffy. I like the butter on top. I feel the hojicha coming through, guys. If you're a fan of hojicha at all, you definitely gotta try it in pancake form because I've never had this before in my life. Guys, nice little daylight, cute cafe up front. And then in the back, they got the speakeasy. That's where you're gonna get your hot food, your brunch food, and your drinks. I'm not gonna show you everything, you just gotta come to Cafe Joa and check it out, Avenue A. All right, you guys, we are at Dumpling Lab NYC right now. You've never seen anything like this. You think we're at a modern hotel right now. Of course, we got something hyper-traditional right here. This is a mackerel jiaozi. They eat this a lot in Dalian, Shandong, you know, coastal northern cities. This, of course, is a popcorn chicken. You gotta have that in 2022. These actually are mala huo guo dumplings. These are guo tie, but with mala huo guo beef filling. This is a shrimp toast, modernized for the uh, 2022 market. These are Sichuan chicken wings, ji chi. And of course, this is their version of kosher ji. This is mouth-watering chicken. Fish jiaozi's or shui jiao, underrated. Cool. I want to say popcorn chicken as a dish is overrated, but I love it every time. Beef huo guo, guo tie. Guo tie is the more pot stick or pan fried type. Oh! That's a must get. Sichuan to the max. This is Dumpling Lab's famous shrimp toast, guys. I never even had this shrimp toast dish until I got here. It has a little cream on top. It's like a little. Shrimp sandwich. That is so good. It's kind of like if you deep fried a hakao from dim sum and you put a little sweet cream on top, it's delicious. Mala chicken wings, plenty of mala on top. Let me break this up. You know how I do with chicken wings, I get down. Got that search one kick. If I remember some slang in Sichuan Hua that the Higher Brothers taught me, Ba Su Suan. Guys, what I love about the dish Ko Sui Ji is that everybody is doing it. Everybody is doing their own version, every region of China. It's such a popular dish. This one has a lot of cucumbers chopped up. It's almost like a spicy chicken salad. Let's check it out. Ma La, but quite refreshing. Interesting. All right, I gotta try one of these mala beef dumplings. I never had such a spicy dumpling before. You are witnessing a crab rangoon dumpling. They're mixing one thing that's very Americanized, one thing that's very traditional. Oh my goodness. There's cheese, there's real crab in there. Especially if you know the way that they are making these dumplings. This is a very Yen Thai Shandong style, the small little ingot style. My goodness, this is the best crab rangoon I ever had in my life. Inventive cool little cocktails here at Dumpling Lab. But over here, back to the dumplings guys, because we are at Dumpling Lab. We have the black and gold uni, uni dumplings. And then here we have the truffle dumplings. And here we have the spicy beef, but we have the swan rong, which is like a garlic oil mixture that we're gonna dip it in. Start with the uni. You've never seen an uni dumpling before. 
The taste of uni is coming out. That's crazy. Uni sui jiao hao chi, but is it worth it? With the gold, it might be. The quality here at Dumpling Lab is really good. Obviously, a lot of people try to do truffle dumplings, but let's see how they do it. Mm. Wow. You know, a lot of elevated fusion spots, when they say they have truffle or uni in the dish, you know, you can't really taste it, but here it really comes through and they make sure it's pronounced. This right here is the spicy beef mala dumpling, and I'm gonna dip it into this garlic oil. Yeah. I feel like I'm in hot pot. The mala spice inside of the beef wrapped up. It gives me that hot pot sauce, and then I dipped it in here, and that was the dipping sauce. God, I, that was, I think that was the best thing. I gotta go in again, hold up. David, you will not believe how much it tastes like hot pot. This one bite. Dumpling Lab has a winner. As you guys may know, boba came from Taiwan, but that does not mean that other Asians or really anybody else for that matter cannot participate in the boba games. We are at a Bengali owned Daisy Boba Shop. As you can see, they got pistachio, they got malai, they got mango, but mango in a mango lusty way and faluda. Let's check it out. It's called Pilate Boba. And uh, so we infuse South Asian ice cream into boba, and it's like a milkshake kind of. Okay, so we put the ice cream in. I'm at Pila de Boba. This is the first Daisy Boba that I've ever had. I heard there are a couple other locations in the New York area, but this is the only one in Manhattan. This is a Malai Kofi. Boba. Kofi is almost like a creamier, spiced version of ice cream. Malai is the flavor. Hold on. Hold on. It is one thing to be exposed to a brand new flavor that you've never had before. This is my first time having the Malai flavor. This is my first time having Kofi, especially in a boba format that's a new fusion. It's delicious. It kind of tastes like nuts and pistachios and spice. It's delicious. In my hand, I got a mango kofi. It might taste kind of like a mango lussie. Let's see though. Whoa, kofi is definitely an extra creamy ice cream. That's really good. I can see this getting more popular because the mango lussie is something that's universal. Everybody who's tried it really likes it. Now it's here in kind of a ice cream smoothie drink form with boba at the bottom. So it's mixing just a bunch of stuff that people love. I love that they're tying in their own culture in with this, I think boba is almost like a blank slate now. It's a format, it's a thing that you can add on to, so I think that's really cool, man. Shout out to New York City. So this is a faluda kufi. It has basil seeds and noodles. No one in New York does that, except for noodles. us. Wait, what, what do you mean noodles? It's like a, it's not more of like, it's like a sweet noodles in it. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say? Man, let me try this, man. <laughs> you said noodles, they got, South Asian noodles and ice cream and smoothies mixed with boba. This is a rose flavor one, by the way. Really good, guys. Are those like crispy noodles? No, they're, they're soft. They're oh, soft. They're, soft. they're like soft, like noodles you can taste it. Just add some cool texture to it, man. This is so invented. I'm so glad I had this. Man, I love what they're doing here because they kept a lot of the traditional flavor and a lot of the traditional elements, but they were able to make it sweet and creamy for everybody. I, I think anybody's gonna like these. Next up on our brand new Asian Concepts video, Andrew, people are always designing products for the moneyed international student. Exactly, we are blocks away from NYU and here we have a Shandong owner that is serving Northern street snacks, noodles and bings for the students out here. And listen, guys, Jam Bings is, is, is getting crazy now. You can add anything into oh, it. So. Andrew, they got more traditional stuff here. This is the true Northern you know, Chi Fa. I'm trying some of this. Shout out to this guy, you know, he looks traditional, and then boom! Hey, little he update got, on the he top. He got Qing Dynasty up here, and then he got the... The bull, he got the Bulls Dynasty. Low key, everybody knows someone who looks like this. Mm. Man, there's just something really natural about sitting on this bench. I don't know what it is though, I just I can't put my finger on it. Wow, that's a sticky mix. That's different than other jamming mixes I've seen. Uh-oh. 
Andrew, we are looking at a Qingdao Jianbing designed for international students. And you were saying it, were, it was different. Yo, the batter was stickier. It looked a little bit different than other Jianbings I'd seen. It almost looks, would you say to you, Andrew, it looks more like a dosa. Man, it looks more like a burrito. Yeah, a dosa, exactly. Uh, we gotta eat it soon though, because listen, there's juicy, spicy crawfish inside. I think the fact that we got Xiaolong Sha, which is the crawfish is crazy. Obviously super popular in China right now. Who knows, this could be the best Jianbing in New York. Let's crawfish crawfish Jianbing. The jambing, as expected, is chewier. It's a little bit more malleable. It's not as crispy, but it almost feels a little bit more like naan. I never thought that I would have crawfish in a jambing, but now that it's here, it's okay. I'm not the biggest crawfish fan, personally. This is one of the most unique jambings I've ever had, and I'm not surprised because every year someone's gonna do something a little bit different with these traditional Chinese street snacks. Well, literally, it's like a burrito. You can put anything in it. All right, here we have some authentic Beijing Jiajiangmian. David, we had Jiajiangmian in the hutongs of Beijing. How does this look compared to it real quick? Give me your this verdict. This is one of the closest versions I've seen, especially like in the NYU yeah. area. And of course, you've got the Lu Douzhou right here. This is a green bean Chuk, essentially a kanji. Uh, and these are dishes that like a hundred year old person would want to eat. Yeah, man. So I don't know if this spot is for the students or the professors or the uh, parents that are come visiting their students here. But uh, yeah, I, I would say this Jiajiang Man looks fairly authentic. I would I would give it maybe a, a seven and a half out of 10 on the authentic scale. Honestly, I feel like I'm back at a church meeting from back when, in our childhood. And what's your verdict? I know you have. Jiajiangmian snob. It's not quite like the hutongs, but it's getting the job done. Now we have one of your favorite dishes of all time where you're a tomato egg noodle snob. You gotta tell me how it is. This is uh, fan che chao dan mian. Obviously guys, if you guys have been watching the channel, this tomato is a fan che. This is a uh, stir fried egg, a chao dan. So yeah, let's get into it, man. This is like probably the most underrated combo in China, to be honest. In terms of like, you know, like people don't really put this on a pedestal from other cultures, you know, they like more eat one tons and things like that. It's a winner! It's a winner! Is it a winner winner tomato egg dinner? For me, Andrew, there was a really good ratio of tomatoes and eggs to noodles. Sometimes you just get like so little tomato and so little egg. It can still work out that way. I'm not a big fan. I know some provinces and some restaurants do it that way. This one give you a ton. Fred, how's that taste? Kind of tastes like a, like a breakfast noodle with eggs. Pretty good. All right, a few years ago, we did a series called Make It Happen featuring young Asian American entrepreneurs in New York City. Now, to be honest, a lot of those projects did not work out, but one of them that did is by Tay, a Korean from Hawaii who's doing Kona Coffee. We're at his second shop out in uh, Chelsea right now. The first one was in LES. Check it out, guys, man. I love to see old friends make it. Macadamia nut coconut Hawaiian latte. All right, you guys, we're at Yamadaya in Greenwich Village right now, and uh, they have some really hard to find Japanese items. It is Chinese owned, but the workers are from Japan. And I think one of the funniest things was the shoplifting wall. Guys, don't shoplift here because they will put your picture and blow you up. So you guys have all been to an Asian market and they do carry some extent of Japanese products. But here at Yamadaya, of course, they got the super deep cut stuff. Um, they got the Muscat green tea. They've got not just Castella cake, which everybody has. They have the white peach Castella cake. So many different mochis and daifukus. And... All right, you guys, we got the vanilla milk cream waffles from Hokkaido from Yamata. This is a brand new Japanese spot. And I would say that previously, a lot of the Japanese spots in the city were kind of like from the old days, you know, 80s, 90s during the Japanese economic boom, but they're coming back again. And uh, I know it was authentic because the lady could not speak English, only Japanese, arigato. Very simple, but you can taste the Hokkaido cream. It's different. Like I said, one of the things Yamada prides themselves on is having Japanese things that the H Marts and the 99 ranches and the other markets don't have, only Japanese. Hi! Oh, these are so fluffy. Wow. David, by the way, I think you've been saying the name wrong. It's Yamadaya or Yamadea. Anyways, guys, Hokkaido milk cream waffles. Mmm. 
I feel like Yamadaya has transported me to like Yokohama, like a little outside of Tokyo, because to be honest, one of the, the lady at the cashier, she really did not speak any English at all. We were asking a question, but I thought that was a very authentic experience at the same time. So guys, whether it's Chinese owned or whatever, this spot is super authentic and they got people straight from Japan. Oh, Hokkaido waffle.